and the disk break is some of these words could have been cut we could have done a, a fewer word, words the disc brake is a lot like the brakes on a motorbike. Can you rephrase it using fewer words quickly? That of motorbike. Brakes of motorbike. Disc brake is like a motorbike brake. Okay. A bike's brakes have a caliper which squeezes the brake pads. Again, in a disc brake, the brake pads squeeze the rotor instead of the wheel. All these things are processes. Words are not the best medium to. Do you see the point? That is why I chose this. Words are not the best medium to illustrate these processes. No matter what you do, this process, this is where your skill in engineering drawing, your skill with lines and curves come into play you could you know that could have been I am not saying this is wrong, but this is not the best medium it is like stitching a shirt stitching a button with a sword. You, know, you can possibly with some effort do it, but that is not the best way to do it. Okay, let us move on. It is not on. like a brake from the motor brake, bike brakes have a caliper which squeezes the brake pads against the wheel and moves the piston towards the disc. The friction between the two brake pads allows the risk of failure during the high speed. Lots so of words. 8B037. Today, I am going to. Are you here? Good that you came in full formal dress. You will be third person. I will request Santosh to put in that order. Okay. Three people you, Dinesh, and Siddhesh, right? Who came in suit. Okay, and then the those who are tied, then the others, and of course, ladies. Isn't about water purifier. Okay, I wanted to make that point, and we have another video, right, uh, Babu? Only one. Okay, fine. Let's. I I want to. <coughs> I wanted to make some other quick point and then you know I will we we still you know four months down the line we are still making some four months down the line we are still making mistakes of pronunciation with regard to keywords. For example, you know what is the pronunciation of the first word there? Calorific. Calorific. Who is the presenter? Karthik, yes. We discussed it yesterday. Right. You know, just give some attention. These things must become a part of your speaking habit. There is no other. Similarly, you know the next develop yeah. lots of people. I heard all the presentations yesterday, and lots of people have not said develop they have said develop, which means you know you have not made the necessary effort to change the habit of speech. It must change. Next, you have to deliver. Next, eliminate. eliminate. Next, industry. Yeah, no, it is not industry. industry. It is industry. Main stress on the first syllable in. It is industry. What is it? Industry. Yes, remember you know. Next, mechanism. mechanism. Next, solar. solar. It is not solar. Okay, lot of people, particularly you know, when 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 this is the key word for you, you must get it right. And next, vehicle. You don't pronounce H there. It's just vehicle. Vehicle. What is it? Vehicle. Vehicle. You know, without the H. Once again, you know that there, there were other words. I didn't want to bother you. I'm just only trying. You know, I'm not saying that your presentation has been bad in the fourth cycle. Many of you have done an absolutely marvelous job. I feel very happy. I feel satisfied. I feel rewarded. Okay, you have really learnt a lot. But you see, we are in the business of perfection. 
we cannot go to the skies with a loose knot or one screw missing. Okay? That is not how perfect machines are made and that is not how perfect men are made. They are good in character, they are good in personality, they are good in speech as well. So, pay attention please. Similarly, you know some sound, this sound continues to be difficult for the class. Can you guess what the last word in the column is? What is the intended word? Gokul, what is the intended word? Above. Above, but the, but the speaker swallowed the last sound. Maybe he did not have breakfast that day. He swallowed the last sound. So, it sounds like a bu and you know your, your listener can get confused. Similarly, the second word from the bottom provide, third word from the bottom five, but v is missing and fourth word from the bottom move is missing in improved lot of people have said improved uh, is missing you know do take care if you speak slowly carefully there is no hurry you know you have got do not say too much but say enough to fill the time that you have been given some wrong usage you cannot say made by plastic by is used for human agents okay made by X company made by Samsung, made by TCS, you, you can say that you do not say for material what do you use? With made with or of made of plastic or made of fiberglass. Okay. So, very less power, what should we say? Very little power or little power, do not use words like you see there is no place for or there is very little place for adjectives and adverbs in an engineer's language. Something is tall, what is very tall? 30, full, 30 floor building, 40 floor building, if you go to Shanghai today, when I was your age Shanghai had no building taller than 4 floors, today no building there is shorter or smaller than 40 floors. Okay, we have Chinese students here, some of them live on the 46th floor, others live on the 50th floor. What is tall? You know, India is also changing extremely rapidly, extremely rapidly. Uh, within next 10 years, it is expected that the skyline in Chennai would rise to at least about 50 meters. Currently, it is somewhere about 20. Okay. Delhi would go much higher, Bombay is already very high. So, what is you know engineers do not have adjectives like uh, you know very many, they use quantities, okay. do not use these terms, that is not for you. This phenomena we talked about yesterday, right. Okay. What I am trying to tell you is these are very small, these were the only examples I was able to pick up from a 15 to 2 plus 10, 110 minute presentation, which means marvelous. I congratulate you, okay. you have done a good job generally as a group, as a class and keep it up. The most difficult challenge for you now would be not to let yourself go back to the old habit. Okay. I will now invite some of you to make some presentation entirely on your own a short presentation either a story or a song and that will go to the you know internet as some of the best from the course. Okay. Who will like to do it first? Aparna you said you would do it, okay, come who next? Dinesh, Rohan, okay. so we will go in that order Aparna, Dinesh, Rohan, what is your name? Saurav, okay. remember yeah, Siddesh, okay. Siddharth, okay. so just about two to three minutes each. Okay? Right, please, I will give you the microphone and you follow the order. Can you hold it? Yeah. Just let me go to the 
receipt for the equivalent of getting that. Try your steps, okay? It won't take longer than a week. Um, good morning to all. My name is Aparna. Today I am going to tell a poem, a very memorable poem. Okay. On a road so busy and so long, walks a pretty girl without a song. Steady head and her will so strong, a milestone in sight as she paces along. Every time she crosses one, wearily she smiles at the ones that are done. She can't stop what has already begun a destination to reach before setting of the sun. She notices the wind blowing along, shaking the leaves and singing its song. A few listen, but it still goes on, for no reason tagging along. Very she looks up at the sky. Suddenly, the beauty catches her eye. The road's so beautiful, she missed all the while the leaves, the birds, and the mystic blue sky. She now understands the song of the wind, embraces the tickle, and the smile that it brings. It dances in happiness as it makes her sing. A sweet, innocent friendship begins. As they dance on a very afternoon, many milestones they will pass soon. Their friendship helps them pace along with a lot more cheer on a road so long. Thank you. Can you also give us the words for this? Okay. What is the meaning of the poem? Let's please meet you. Meet you. Hello, I'm Dinesh, and today I'd like to tell a story to you guys. Once upon a time in India, around 18th century, there's one Chinese general named Tan Sui. He's a very great general, and he was like a great conqueror. He conquered large parts of north eastern part of India, and wherever he stepped across, he just kept conquering and conquering and conquering. And one day, the king called back, the emperor of China called him back to China and asked him to spend a year with him. He decided to go back to China. Well, just before leaving, he thought if he could take a sage from India, it would be very helpful and it would also bring him goodness and happiness throughout. So he, they decide and the emperor, the general and few of his workers goes in search of a sage. After two days, they find a sage sitting under a banyan tree. Now, he very politely now asked the sage, I would, like, would, I would like you to come along with me. I'll give you all the wealth I can ever give anybody. And I'll also give any sort of pleasure you ever thought of. The sage says, I'm happy and comfortable here. And I have no desire for pleasures. So I refuse to accept your accept his offer. He gets very angry and he draws out his sword immediately and saying, Me, one of the greatest emperor general ever born in China, and nobody stays alive after disobeying me. Now the now the sage is not even stricken, like he's just calm again, polite. Now the sage tells him, You're a slave of my slave. How do you think you can? kill over me. He's shocked. He just drops his sword. He's, uh, he's amused at that moment. And he asks, what are you saying? He says, I, the sage replies, I mastered my anger and you are being mastered by your anger. So now basically you're a, I'm a, ma you're, you're a slave of my slave. So the moral of the story is you need to be aware of the situations, people, surroundings of you. So before you act, think twice.
Thank you. Good morning, friends. Uh, so this story which I am going to tell is a real life story. Uh, it involves my uh, uncle, my maternal uncle. Uh, he lives in the uh, U.S. So one fine morning, like as usual, he got up, he got ready to go to work and all. So uh, what happened is. I exactly don't know the details, but what happened is his wife, my aunt, she misplaced his briefcase or something. So they had like this big quarrel, like they're like quarreling that uh, you always do this and all normal husband wife quarrel. So uh, because of that, he got some half an hour late or something. So he was very angry. And that day, I think he had some important meeting. So he was very angry on my aunt, his wife. So like he drove to his office, so he was driving in the middle of his tracks, he stopped and there in front of him, he saw the World Trade Center collapsing. So yeah, my uncle worked in the World Trade Center and it was 9-11 and luckily he got late because of whatever quarrel and now he is safe, he's alive, he is living in the US. So the only moral which we can get through this is that I think everything which happens ultimately happens for the good. Like only you need you need to have faith that yes, whatever is happening in the end, something good will happen for me. Like so, I think that is what we can learn from this experience. Thank you. Next, please. Good morning everyone, uh, I am here to recite a poem. This is from my middle school and I was uh, scheduled to uh, recite this in front of my school, but however the program got cancelled, so now I have an opportunity. So here goes, the poem is called The Muddle Head by Ogden Nash. I knew a man from Petushki, as muddlehead as could be. He always got mixed up with clothes. He wore his mittens on his toes, forgot his collar in his haste, and tied his tie around the waist. What a muddlehead was he, the man who lived in Petushki. They told him as he went about, you've got your coat inside out. And when they saw his hat, they said, You've got a saucepan on your head. What a muddle head was he, the man who lived in Petushki. At lunch, he scratched a piece of bread and spread some butter on his head. He put his walking stick to bed and he stood in the rack instead. What a muddle head was he, the man who lived in Petushki. He walked up to a tram one day and climbed in very sprightly. 
the conductor thought that he would pay. Instead, he said politely, Pardon your begin, Mr. Monductor, I am off for a week's vacation. I stop you to beg your tramway car as soon as we reach the station. The conductor got a fright and did not sleep that night. What a muddle head was he, the man who lived in Petushki. He rushed into the first cafe, a railway ticket please, one way, and at the ticket office said, a slice of tea and a cup of bread. What a muddle head was he, the man who lived in Petushki. He passed the man collecting the fares and entered a carriage awaiting repairs that stood on a siding all by itself. Half of his luggage he put on a shelf, the rest on the floor, the coat in his lap and settled himself for a bit of a nap. All at once he raised his head. I must have been asleep, he said. Hey, what stop is this? He cried. Petushki, a voice replied. Once again he closed his eyes and dreamt he was in paradise. When he woke, he looked about, raised the window and leaned out. I have seen this place before, I believe. Is this, is this Karpov or is it Kiev? Tell me where I am. In Petushki, a voice replied. And so again he settled down and dreamed the world was upside down. When he woke, he looked about, raised the window and looked out. I seem to know this station too. Is, it, is this Nalchik or Baku? Tell me what it's called, he cried. Petushki, a voice replied. Up he jumped. It's a crime. I've been riding all this time. And here I am where I began. That's no way to treat a man. What a muddle head was he, the man who lived in Petushki. Thank you. Thank you. Please save the text. Okay, the following poem, written by an African boy, was nominated for the best poem in 2005. When I born, Name of the poem, it is not there, sir. When I born, I black. When I grow up, I black. When I go in sun, I black. When I scared, I black. When I sick, I black. And when I die, I am still black. And you white fella, when you born, you pink. When you grow up, you white. When you go in sun, you red. When you cold, you blue. When you scared, you yellow. When sick, you green. And when you die, you grey. And you calling me colored? Thank you. Give me the text, please. Anyone else would like to last chance for anyone? <coughs> Okay, uh, we have another 20 minutes almost. Are you all right? Are you relaxed? Okay, uh, the, the five people that presented poems and stories have really done me proud. You know, it shows that given an opportunity to speak, you will take it. Take the opportunity, you see. As somebody has very famously said, luck is when preparation meets the opportunity. You must be prepared. Luck will come your way. But even if luck comes your way and you are not prepared, it does not take you anywhere. You know, if you want to go to Chennai Central Station, you are ready. Somebody gives you lift, that is luck. You got the opportunity, you are ready. So, like this, you know, you will get opportunities to speak, to further hone your skill, 
at this institute, in your hostel, in your village, in your company. Please believe me, beyond all cynicism, it is extra work which adds to your power. Laziness, fear, reluctance, shyness, hesitation has never made anyone anything except a luggage, a piece of luggage on the mother earth. Okay? Do take the opportunity whenever you get it. I am not telling you be the chatterbox. There is something called you know opportunity. If you are expected to speak, stand up. You may not speak for two hours, you may speak for only two minutes, but let those two minutes be the memorable minutes. It adds to your personality. Okay? Now, in the last part of the course, I like to summarize what we have tried to learn. Once again, please mark my word. I am not telling you I have taught you anything, because I have not taught you anything. What is there to you know, speaking is something nobody can teach you. There are lots of researches, lots of researches to prove that all of us learn to speak because of our effort. We need exposure, we need motivation. Actually, if you do a course next semester with me in linguistics, I will tell you that language learning begins right inside the womb of your mother. You know fetus begins learning language. As soon as the child is about 14 week old, the child has a brain, you know the, the fetus has the brain, the language learning becomes. So, we learn, we acquire language, nobody teaches us anything. No matter how hard I try, I cannot speak for you, just as I cannot walk for you. So, what have we learnt or what have we tried to learn? evaluate your own learning following this matrix. Okay. Number one, no presentation, no examination, no performance, be it dance, be it song, be it examination, be it making a project proposal, nothing should be done without preparation, absolutely nothing. Can you recognize who this general is? Alexander. Anybody make this? Yes, Alexander, Alexander the Great. One of the greatest generals, even today, his warfare techniques are taught in military colleges. He is the one who said soldiers should have short hair, otherwise, you could be caught by your hair and your head could be chopped off. He is the one who said soldiers should be clean shaven. He is the one who said, wear short clothes, not long clothes. He still remembered and he was a great general. This horse of his, he is sitting upon, anybody can hazard a guess, what was it called? Lucifer. Yeah? Lucifer. Yes. How do you know? I have read. Yeah. It is Lucifer. It was a great horse okay. and Alexander acquired it when he was 14. His father gifted him this horse to him. One day, can I tell you this story? Okay. One day, some horse seller came to his father. His father was called Philip, the king of Macedonia. And the horse was rather wild. All his generals, you know, none of none none of his generals was able to mount the horse. The, as soon as they tried to mount the horse the horse would shake them off. So, the king told the horse dealer, horse seller that he could not buy that horse. It was a wild horse yet to be tamed and then the horse seller taunted the king. He said, no me lord, the horse is not wild. It is only that you do not have generals who can ride this horse. The king felt bad, but could not do anything. Alexander was also there, he was about 14 at that time and he was uh, Philip's son from his first wife. His mother had been already been dead and Philip had taken a second wife and Alexander was not his father's favorite. 
Alexander was you know his own master in many ways, even at that age his father did not like him very much. But Alexander uh, requested his father for permission to try his hand and the father was reluctant, eh? this boy is you know cheeky where generals have failed, what a 14 year old boy could do. But he said anyway you can try and Alexander went there and Alexander had observed the horse. The horse had been stood at an angle where the horse saw its own shadow and the shadow of the mounting rider and that movement you know the shadow coming in motion made it nervous. So, it shook you know it the horse felt uneasy and the horse shook the rider off. Alexander had observed this. So, what Alexander did was he did not immediately try to ride the mount the horse. He held the horse by the rein, walked the horse some distance, patting the horse on its buttock on its back all along and finally, took it to an angle where the shadow fell behind the horse. Are you with me? Do you get the process? Okay. It fell behind the horse and once it fell behind the horse, then he took the horse to a trot. You know, trot is where only one leg is in the sky, three legs are still, three feet are still on the earth and then he mounted the horse and was able to do several rounds of the palace courtyard where this horse was. So, finally, the king bought him that horse at a huge price and Alexander kept that horse and he personally cared for that horse all his life. This horse died in his battle against Porus in India on a rainy night. It got hit by a spear and the spear cut its throat and the horse died. Alexander wept for it. The point I am making is whether a war, whether a great general or a great scientist or a great writer or a great manager, you know, have you heard about Samsung company? Read about the biography of its founder, somebody called Samsung. Okay. The company was decimated three times, it came to zero during second world war, during Korean communist revolution, they were in North Korea okay, driven out, there was nothing. But today Samsung is the biggest Asian company, there is nothing they do not have, they have shipping, they have power, they have fertilizers, they have paper, they have television, they have consumer electronics, what is it they do not have, how is it possible or you know any big company read about I have read about uh, Japan you know and there the culture is that if the chief executive is in town, the chief executive goes before anyone else at the company gate at least 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before others stands there and receives his colleagues saying good morning. In Japanese they say ohayo godaimasu, okay. very good morning, do come in. The point I am making is preparation and attention to even little details, words, dress, slides, where you will stand, how you will face the camera, which angle, when you would take turn, all these things and with practice they become a part of your habit, but you have to pay attention in the beginning if you want to be a a great man, a great woman, a great personality, okay, just as some of the. So, preparation is very important. Dinesh put this preparation word on red yesterday uh, under the horse. I had put it in black above the horse. I hope you like Dinesh's art. Okay, I usually do not like red, but I thought I will try it. Do you like red? Yes or no? The red, you know, the word preparation in red here. Do you like it? Say yes or no, because the word can be heard. Shaking of the head cannot. Yes. Okay. Right. Let's move. You know, I have little time. Okay. And prepare to the last details. Research your topic as well. Don't take anything for granted. 
that is one lesson I have to give you. Okay. If you are asked to speak about your village, you already know your village, even then do not take it for granted. Sit down, ask yourself, do I know all that is there to know? Can I find something new? Can I check on my facts? When it happened, you are asked to speak at this institute, you know, somebody once spoke, gave me a presentation on Gajendra circle, one of somebody, some boy from this class. Why is Gajendra circle there? And he said that one day, the mother of the Maharaja of Mysore was walking through this garden with her <coughs> gardener and she found, you know, this campus used to be part of Mysore Maharaja's estate, which became Raj Bhavan. Uh, so, she found, the gardener found two elephants there playing football. Okay. A very fantastic story, I do not think it is true, but the point, <laughs> but the point is, you know, to hold the audience's attention, that boy had created an entire story. He had a stories about lots of things, why is OAT like that? Okay. And he has another story, you know, the elephants you are taken for a wash there. He had everything connected with elephant and <laughs> elephants and Mysore and you know, etcetera, etcetera. So, when the first director came here and saw this elephant pond, then he and his wife wondered and they decided that it will be a good place for us to sit down and watch movies every, you know, uh, Saturday. The point I am making is, give attention to, you have to fill in 10 minutes, 2 minutes. How am I going to fill it in? What am I going to say? You know, when I joined here, there was a tennis coach, somebody called K U N Rao. Many of us called him Kunu Rao. Okay, and Kunu Rao had lots of stories of this kind, elephants playing football and all that. Okay. So, research your topic, check on the facts. You can research in many ways. You have you are you are the lucky generation, you know, Google it and you get it. But you also there are, if there are questions for which Google does not have answers, check with your elders, your parents, your teachers. There is a saying in Arabic, something like this, for the sake of knowledge, go even to China and India. You know, from Arab those days, desert had to be crossed, but for the sake of knowledge, go even to uh, you know, India and China. So, check your slides, your other tools, if you are playing a tape recorder, if you are playing a music system, if you are going to show some photographs or some rare document, check beforehand, do not leave it to the last minute work. Check your language, are you sure of the words you are going to use, their pronunciation, their grammar, everything. Okay. If you want to tell jokes, yes, check your joke, telling jokes believe me is one of the most difficult things in public. Okay. When you tell jokes and nobody laughs, you feel like crying. Okay. When you tell jokes and you have to tell others, please laugh now, it has a joke. Okay. I have had many boys, you know, once I tried jokes for this class and after that I decided, lots of boys cried telling their jokes, okay. they could not. You know, so, check how you know, jokes have to be delivered, you know, jokes have to be delivered with very theatrical with, with a degree of theatricality, you have to say something fast, you have to wait for something else, okay. but it is a great tool if you can manage it. There is nothing gets you the attention of your listeners better than a joke. Right? So, check your jokes or quotes, lot of people ask me, is it very important for us to have quotes or quotations, not really if nothing else you know and if you are very keen that you should have some quotation then quote then quote yourself this is from bernard shaw you know the what the quotation i have given you there i have often quoted myself he said uh, you know i don't have to quote aristotle or tolstoy or vashistha or vishwamitra you can be you are you are an aristotle you are a vashistha or vishwamitra or you can tell anecdotes 
just as Rohan, you told us about World Trade Center now, yeah, that is an anecdote from your own mind, okay. So, that is that's marvelous, you, you do not have to, but prepare, pay attention to all the relevant aspect, aspects, that is extremely important. Do not take any little thing for granted. There is a poem in English which says, the kingdom was lost for the sake of the nail. The king rode on the horse, the horse had a horseshoe, horseshoe had nails and one nail was loose. So, when the king went to the battlefield, you know the nail was loose, therefore the horseshoe fell down, therefore the horse fell down, therefore the king fell down and therefore the kingdom fell down. Okay. It, it is maybe a bit of exaggeration, but it is not entirely untrue. Okay. It is attention to little things that makes a great building. There has to be a reason why Taj Mahal is still intact 400 years after its construction and many other buildings, particularly the modern buildings, government buildings we build these days do not last as long. Okay. It is a marvel of engineering. If you are interested, there is an article on the structure of Taj Mahal, google it and see the detail there, the attention they paid to the details, the angles, the distances. You feel here is in, here is somebody who deserved to be called an engineer a structural engineer. He was an Armenian guy who made it possible. So, you know all great lives tell you the attention to details is important. The next check before you talk, the hall, the audience, who are going to be your listeners? You know we have the luxury, teachers have the luxury, we know our listeners. You guys are captive, even if you do not like me, you cannot walk out of this class, I have got you for 50 minutes. Okay. I can make salad out of you or soup out of you, but you will not have that privilege with your colleagues, with your peer group. You know, I am reminded of you know, students write things on desks, do you also write on desks in classes when you are bored. Okay. So, somebody once in the student magazine here made a survey of writings on the desk and one that I remember even today, in my opinion that is the best, I would like to write it, so that you can take it home. What does it say? Can you read it aloud? Please. In the memory of Hindu, in the memory of those who became martyrs waiting for the bell. Okay. Right. You may not have similar martyrs in your, you know, they may want to leave if you are not interesting. So, check your audience what age, how old, how young, what gender, what nationality they are going to be from. Okay. And if you are going to have a lot of old people, your fonts naturally must be larger, your language must naturally change. If you are going to have a lot of ladies, please believe me, no lady in no culture likes a boy who is crude. Okay. It, they, they may like a crude joke on the screen, but in person nobody likes a very crude fellow. Okay. So, you, you have to be refined, you have to be civilized culture, check on your audience. But if you are speaking only to the boys in your own hostel, then you can go without pants and speak if you like, any way you like. Okay. Check the lights and the location on the podium. You know many of us teachers, I am reminded of a book which I, I was given when I joined this institute, teaching at MIT. 
uh, it was a great book, you know, and many people followed that even here. Check the location of the blackboard in relation to the window, where the light falls on your blackboard, so that you write accordingly, big or small letters. These little things do matter, where you should stand, how you should write, when you should talk, when you should go quiet, when you should not talk, okay? all of these principles. Check any other tools you may wish to use, you know it is common sense, common sense cannot be taught. There is no school which says you are now BSc in common sense or BTEC in common sense. It is your you know your intelligence plus imagination on the spot, right. Language is your best tool, you reach others only through language. Okay. So, as far as possible use simple words, simple sentences. When you tell a story and speak as if you are telling a story, speak slowly, create the picture, okay. create the picture you know and you will find that your audience is involved. Draw pictures in words, hold attention of your listeners. I wanted to tell you the story of this witch, but we are running out of time. Uh, I was as I have been telling you raised in a village and lots of witch stories the elders would tell us okay and you know they would create picture those days they didn't have lcd presenters but they would say you know witches are tall thin they have big eyes long hair uh, pardon me aparna okay okay long hair their eyes can be bloodshot their nose can be crooked very fair white in the evenings don't go through that street and we would ask why and they would say, do not you know? They would never say there is a witch there, but they say do not you know? They put fright in your head and out of curiosity, we would still want to go there in the evening or to see, because we are told the witch gets out at midnight, climbs a tree and then takes boys for her dinner and girls for her breakfast. Okay, that you know, they create spin stories, you know, like the art of storytelling is a dying art now, but a great art. Okay, uh, here again Dinesh helped me download, you know this is a typical imaginary portrait of a witch, crooked nose, big eyes, hooded, weird looking, she has all kinds of things, crows, egg and what not. You must be at your best, okay? best in every sense of the term dress as well as you can. You are going for performance. Let the world remember you that here was a man worth listening to. Okay? Wear a smile, relax, there is nothing to fear. Respect your audience, your audience respects you. Okay? I have been telling you have good eye contact with your listeners, do not make unnecessary gestures. Even now, Four months down the course, I have found you know people you know in this like you are giving out of respect for your listeners, you must be at your best. And of course, speak slowly, as slow as you can, as naturally as you can. Spoken English is different from written English. You and I are very good at written English. We don't make mistakes of spelling, punctuation, grammar and vocabulary, but spoken English is different. It has stresses, it has pauses, it has peculiar pronunciations, they write Manchester and they speak it as London. Okay. Check at least the key words. So, as I told you in the beginning, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Uh, some great man said it, I am forgetting the name of that great man, you can check on the Google. Thank you and wish you all the very best. Can you please join me in clapping for Santosh and my friends in the studio, who have helped us all these four months. Okay. Thank you Babu and please convey, thank you Sunil, convey my thanks to the entire team here and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this course and 
some of you will become great speakers. <laughs>